Yeah, in Rockhampton, uh, where Talisman Sabre, the massive US Australian yeah. exercises are on. And we're just going to hear from our friends, just starting here with a remembrance of Assange. And we'll acknowledge that country that we're on, the Durhamal country, in a moment. Just heading back down here. This is the banner that we're unveiling today, the End the US Alliance banner and End the Lies, End the Wars. Free Assange is our messaging. So welcome here. We are here in Rockhampton. We're going to hear from our friends here. Good morning, everyone. Just want to acknowledge that we're on Darumbal country. This always was and always will be Darumbal land since time immemorial. So just if we take a moment to feel the earth, feel the water, feel the air around us that sustains our life. Pay respect to elders on country, past, present and emerging. We stand here this morning out front of the Rockhampton Courthouse uh, at the start of three weeks of some of the world's largest war preparations. 30,000 US troops are coming over. They're coming over to practice and prepare for war. Driving us towards a war with China. Spending weapons. I think we're gonna spend hundreds of billions of dollars on nuclear submarines that Australia will probably never see. And $30 billion a year on top of our so-called defense budget, straight into the pockets of arms dealers, preparing for a war which can only be a catastrophe to our country. Our largest, the largest empire in history is urging us, dragging us into a war with our largest trading partner. A war that can have no winners, that could easily lead to nuclear catastrophe. And just up the road on Shoalwater Bay, they're going to practice for this war. And Australia is willingly supporting the US as it goes to war. A war where millions might die. There will be no winners. There will be no freedom. There will be nothing gained from this war except blood, destruction and death. And it's up to people everywhere who are interested and care about a safe future for our planet. Up to everyone everywhere to get involved in non-violently disrupting war preparations and war exercises wherever they happen. We've got privileges won by civil rights movement of the past and we need to use them to protect the safety of our future. Because right now the safety of our future is at risk. Just so a few rich people at the top can keep making money. So we're here today to launch the Peace Convergence. Weeks of non-violent disruptive action aimed at getting in the way of war preparations. Aimed at actually building a safe, fair, just future for all of us. So we invite you today to come and get involved. Come and get involved in the Peace Convergence in preparations for peace and justice and not for war and destruction and murder. And I do have a special guest if he wants to come over and be interviewed briefly. He's just uh, having coffee. So we're asking today to end the US alliance. We're asking to end the war on whistleblowers and for free information. If you've got nothing to hide, then you shouldn't be ashamed to reveal your secrets. You're listening to our phones, you're scouring our internet, you know all ours. Show us yours and stop persecuting the whistleblowers. End the US alliance. I'm going to be running for earth care, not warfare. So today I've got a special guest, Mr. Reaper. Good morning, Mr. Reaper. Can you tell us your first name? Uh, Grim, Grim. Hi, uh, Grim, Grim Reaper. Um, uh, how are you going today? What, what are you thinking about the next little future? Oh, well, things are looking great, really good. Everyone's uh, keen to have a nuclear war and uh, bring the everyone on this planet. It's been great. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, now these war games are fantastic. You know, we've got countries from uh, everywhere, Japan and England and New Zealand's over and uh, the US and we're all getting together to give you some people. It's really good, it's great, you know. I thought that, uh, you know, people might be wanting peace in the world, but, you know, Everyone supporting this war in Ukraine, all these former peace people are all on my side now and things are looking great. Yeah, great, great. 
And so you were pretty happy with the war preparations and the Talisman Saber war exercises? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's fantastic for business. They're, like I said, they're all preparing to give me everyone on the planet. It's mm. really good what they're doing here in Rockhampton. People of Rockhampton should be very grateful for helping me so much. Well, uh, Mr. Reaper, thanks for your time. I know you're pretty busy at the moment with all the money being poured into uh, weapons and war. Do you have any final words for people watching us? Yeah, keep preparing for war. It's great. Good on you. Uh, thank you for your time, we, Mr. We Reaper. Usually wouldn't, we w usually wouldn't platform somebody like that, uh, Greg, here on Wage yeah. just, just saying it's not like... We don't like platforming that sort of thing. We normally, normally on Wage Peace, we don't normally platform uh, uh, Grim Reaper, but... Uh, yeah, he came today and paid me enough money, so apparently that's how it works. It's all, all, all for money, get for money. We are going to have a bit of an open mic now, and I just invite people to come and tell your stories about uh, for whistleblowers, for earth care and environmental justice and for peace. We welcome anyone's voices who wants to have a go. Oh, yes, uh, Margaret. I'd like to, um, I'd just like to acknowledge the Jambo people who have uh, hosted us here before. Uh, we have, we've had Jambo friends, but they've passed on and I just want to remember them and remember the kindness that they showed us in previous years. Um, and we know that their people are still here with us and Jambo people have been strong advocates of peace and strong uh, opposers of the colonisation of this country. Um, and a lot of Durham people have been moved to Brisbane all those years ago and we know that from there they built strong families and strong uh, resistance to the colonisation. So, you know, we know that that colonisation was built on militarisation and we still see that in these exercises where they basically take over that land, practice militarising, practice invading that land and then they're really doing that because they're looking at doing this across the Pacific. They're already doing it in Hawaii, Guam, Okinawa, the Marshall Islands. And the people across that area have been opposing that militarization of indigenous lands for a long time. And I, I just want to recognize that, you know, that we know that indigenous, indigenous people are calling us, calling us to pay attention to the earth and the planet. And they know, um, and they're telling us that our, um, very being in existence is tied to the planet's being in existence and if you just a quick shout out because this friday night you can meet uh activists from across the pacific in brisbane um at the fire the sacred fire there at musgrove park and then at a conference on saturday so just a shout out to all those activists who are coming in from the pacific there's a, a set from guam okinawa um, and they're all linked up also with people in Hawaii and um, other Pacific you know, countries in New Zealand and across uh, you know, the, the, that, that network. So just a shout out and recognition of that resistance that has been a long and continued resistance um, and a strong and loving resistance. Um, but I also am interested, you know, as somebody from Wage Peace, I'm interested in this idea of um, you know, ending the, 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 the alliance and one of the things that we, we, of course, we know about the alliance is that, um, what we know about the alliance is that it is caught up with US commerce and the thing that the alliance um, does most significantly is make sure that it sells its own weapons into Australia and Australia is currently got itself into a symbiotic relationship with the US where it's buying uh, from the US 20 to 30 billion dollars worth of equipment. It's spending about that much each year. Uh, it's mostly US equipment from Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon. And what we know is that this, uh, these war exercises are like a justification for buying that equipment. You can't buy it and just park it somewhere. They would, you know, really they would like to buy it. You've got to you buy it, you use it, you play with it. Then you create a justification for, exist for its existence. And it seems to be one of the only areas that the US has left that it's excelling in is the, is the sale of US weapon systems across the world, the sale of security forces uh, 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 and uh, war services, basically. Um, and what we see, of course, coming back, who, who suffers from that? 
the people of the Pacific in this region, Aboriginal people who have seen their land militarised, um, and now more and more people who are caught up in that web. And we look at this, uh, this war on China as a, a, a crazy extension of, um, of militarisation as the US excuses and justifies and makes reasoning for its selling enormous amounts of weapons at a time that we actually need earth repair. We need earth care. We need to be looking at what is really the real thing that's going, the real security issue of our times is the climate crisis, the ecological crisis, the biological crisis. You know, the planet has sustained humans. It's us, humans that are going to suffer. Um, as we see also there's many people um, as, 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 as we move towards ex, you know, extinction, uh, m many creatures and uh, species moving to extinction. So the, you know, these are things that are very important for us at Wage Peace, that these sorts of exercises need to be called out for what they are. They are a sign of US expansionist militarism. And I know that sounds a bit jargony, but it's about the US expanding its influence around the world to maintain its control over particular commerce, aspects of commerce, particularly the movement for us. What's interesting is the movement of US weapons uh, and weapon systems. And we have companies in, a, in Queensland like Boeing. Boeing is a US company that has extraordinary power in, and relationship with the Queensland government and also the federal government, but particularly the Queensland government, where it's um, organising the development of weaponised drones, uh, hypersonic missiles for its hypersonic missile uh, uh, program. It's doing that through the University of Queensland. It's doing it through uh, systems of, it, it's got two buildings now in the centre of, of Brisbane. It's got control of an airport out to the west got constructed using an airport up in the northwest. So we see Boeing has got its tentacles throughout Queensland and we have to think Boeing is a major, it's the number three US weapons corporation in the world, the number three weapons corporation in the world. And we've got to look at what it's doing, why it's doing it here and what it's wanting. These corporations have an enormous amount of influence and, and we know that they are taking the money out of the fossil fuel industry and passing it through the weapons corporations uh, into the weapons, you know, it, it, into weapons profits really for those people who are invested in weapons. So I'm wondering if somebody else would like to speak. Um, we've heard from the Grim Reaper though, we, I have to say we don't usually platform uh, death and destruction, but today unfortunately I snuck in on the agenda. And, but is there anybody else who would like to speak today? Uh, have you got anybody else who would like to speak? I'll talk. Dave, I'll, maybe. Dave, I'll talk him into it. Dave's going to say something. Lily's asking some Hi, questions. Uh, it's great to be here on Durrambal country. Um, that's a great reminder. We're in the middle of town. Um, and it's good to remember this is Durrambal land. It hasn't been ceded. There's no treaty. And um, um, there's, there's no like, there's no incentive given to, from Durrambal people for their land to be used for military exercises. There's no consent given for, for Aboriginal land to be used as a launch pad for a war. A war which none of us here want, a war which is catastrophic. Our biggest threat is the climate. It is not China. Our biggest threat is the infiltration of the military industrial complex in this country. There are thousands and thousands of people who are working for conflicts, who are working for wars, who are telling us in the media every day how dangerous China is, how they're building up their military and they're grooming us like 
a pedophile grooms a child to make us complicit in a war, a war that we don't want, a war that has enormous cost for the planet, for our people, for our lands, a war that nobody wants. And there are thousands and thousands of people in this country, in the United States, who are working for this war, who are working for conflicts, who work for weapons companies, who work for policy institutes, think tanks, there's revolving doors, there's politicians, the senior political advisors who are working for war, for conflict, for weapons companies. And they put so much work into this, every year, every day, they get paid big dollars, tax dollars, to tell us to go to war. Every single day. They take money away from housing, they take money away from education, they take money away from communities, from schools, from our homes, from our important public institutions for to make weapons and to go to war. I'm not okay with that. Okay, that fella over there is okay with it. But I'm not. And everyone here is not okay with that. And there's, there's an example of someone who has been subjected to a lot of media and a lot of messaging that tell him that war is acceptable. And I'm here to say it's not acceptable. And I'm here to say that we are small in number, but we will continue to oppose war because we know it's wrong. And we are outnumbered, vastly outnumbered. We are so few, and there is so many that are paid big dollars to fight for war. So you need to think about that when you're subjected to all this messaging about war daily, on a daily basis. It's all out there every day. I think I'll um, conclude there. Um, anyone else want to say a few words? We're just here at the um Rockhampton Courthouse and we're just hearing from different people having a speak out. We've unveiled this, um, we've just unveiled this beautiful new banner of, of Graham Dunstan's uh, End the Lies, End the Wars, End the US Alliance. And we're interested in, um, um, we're interested in also the role of the Assange case and freeing Assange. It's very important that Assange is free uh, and that's an important part you know it's an important element in this US alliance is the lack of action that we see yeah, by the Australian government and we can see there's some sort of weird control going on there between uh, US and Australia so yeah please stick with us make some comments like and share this live feed if you like we're here at Rockhampton and we're doing a speak out and now we're going to hear from somebody else who also has a free Assange t-shirt. Hello, I'd like to acknowledge, uh, acknowledge first that we're on Darundel country. This is Aboriginal land. Sovereignty was never ceded and it always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Like Dave has mentioned, there is no consent by the local people to use their country as playground for paranoid little obsessed, greedy boys that want to play their war games. We are here on a mission for peace. Because peace takes much more courage than being armed up events that Australia by the US, our big brother, was the Vietnam War, which started with a lie. Which started with the lie that the US was attacked, which never actually happened. And in the process, about 4 million people in Vietnam were killed by endless bombing, supported by the US and supported by Australia. 
the U.S. alliance meant that in the view of the world, Australia became guilty to be one of the aggressors or co-aggressors in a lot of wars of aggression that were mainly U.S.-led. There was no reason to attack Vietnam. There was no reason to attack Korea. There was no reason to attack Afghanistan. There was no reason to attack Iraq. And all the time, Australian soldiers died for the U.S. empire. And it's about time to end the lies. End the lies that wars are about justice and are about peace. You cannot bomb the world into peace. That's an idiocy. But if you hammer it in in the media and you build up the paranoia, you might start believing there is something to it. There is an enemy out there to get us. And the real en enemy that is out there to get us is the destruction, the death and destruction produced by the military industrial complex. There is no environmental concerns when armies invade a nation and use depleted uranium and destroy the livelihood of the local people for generations to come. There is no peace in destroying civilian infrastructure and there is no proper use to waste taxpayers' monies in large military games like the one that is just happening or just about to start to happen here in the eastern coast of Australia. We have to end the lie that war creates peace. We have to end the wars because wars historically have only done one thing, because death, destruction and misery. And this abundant planet will turn into a waste dump, the waste dump for the nuclear industry, the waste dump for the military industry, where people are no longer the custodians of the planet, but have been turned to be disposable entities in a corporate game that takes, that considers humans merely as human resources, not as living, breathing, loving, caring beings, which is why we're here. That is the path of peace. And peace takes courage. War is a game of paranoid cowards, nothing else. Thank you. So we're here in Rockhampton and just hearing from different people who are, um, we have just unveiled this beautiful banner here and the lies in the wars. But of course, um, Assange, Thank you can see the banners here. Else want to have a go? Um, so uh, you can see here the Just banners. Went into um, Chris O'Brien. And just want to acknowledge the people of Afghanistan who there was a large protest yesterday and here. women went out to protest for their rights and a lot of them were hosed down by the Taliban after suffering twenty years of Western Imperial War. They're now being attacked for fighting for their civil rights. And I just want to acknowledge that it's happening right now to vulnerable to people. We're very vulnerable, standing up for their rights and against the oppressive regime. And we stand in solidarity with the, with the women of Afghanistan for their rights. Come, come on over. Frame with this. So we're here on Durhambul country and um, just during the Talisman Sabre exercises, these exercises are the biggest symbol of the US alliance that we have in Australia with 30,000 you know, uh, uh, personnel, 30,000 people involved. So we're just going to hear from the creator of the banners. Good morning, Rockhampton. This is Graham Dunstan speaking out against war, speaking out against the US alliance, speaking for the liberty of Julian Assange. Julian Assange, a local boy in a sense, he went to high school in Cairns. His first university was CQ, right? He grew up here. He knows this city. Let's remember him. Four years now in solitary confinement. Let me say it again. Four years in solitary confinement for telling the truth about US war crimes. Got a, um, 18 hours a day. An event here on Yapoon with Walk. John Shipton, Assange. Locked up in a maximum security jail in London 
on remand. No charges have been laid. He has committed no crime apart from revealing US crimes. Let's recognise his heroism. Let's recognise that of all the journalists in Australia, he stands head and shoulders above them all. There is no one that comes in his lead. Certainly not in Rockhampton. What's going on in the ABC these days? Why has it become so quiet and compliant with US wars, promoting them, feeling this is okay, never questioning the official line? These are not journalists, they are cowards. Do you hear me, Fraser Pierce? We expected more from you. You have not delivered on Julian Assange. You have not delivered the truth about US war crimes that are happening in, with our troops. What's to say of Julian? That he subsists. That we should remember him every day if we want to remember a hero. Of all of them, the biggest change has come from those WikiLeaks. I spent some time in Canberra. You'll be aware that the Australian War Memorial went through a reno, a renovation, $500 million. And what was the cause for that expenditure? Because they wanted to tell the story of the modern wars, the modern US wars, Afghanistan, Iraq, and the Middle East generally. So, we went there because we're saying if you're going to rebuild the, the Australian War Memorial and tell relevant stories, let's begin with telling the story of the frontier wars. No, nah, they said. No, nah, we're not doing frontier wars. When you come into the Australian War Memorial, you will not see anything relating to the folk frontier wars. So what story are you going to tell? Well, Afghanistan, right? Where are you going to get your information from? Uh, WikiLeaks. How about that? Are you going to do a, do a display about the impact of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange as part of the ex exhibition? Uh, no, but we do acknowledge that all the information, the story of the Afghan war and the Iraq war is still classified. So we can't tell the public directly. But thank goodness for WikiLeaks, because all the documents we need are there. So even in their dependence, they cannot be gracious enough to speak out for Julian Assange. But we will. He is a victim of the US alliance. He was pointing to the dangers of lining ourselves up with the US. Let's see what's happened on that front. You remember Obama came to the parliament when Gillard was prime minister. It was a joint sitting. All her parliaments in one. Everyone was falling over themselves, even the Greens, to get touch the flesh with Obama. And what was he here, there for? He was there to gear up Australia into the US war in the Pacific against China. And he flew out of Canberra, went to Darwin with an agreement to build a base, use the Robertson base in Darwin, our most forward military base, for rotational marines, they called them. Marines would come in every year and do exercises, train with the Australian troops. Well, to make this possible, and let, let's point out that the US has no foreign troops on its territory. It doesn't believe in allowing the homeland to have soldiers based there from foreign nations. But us, we're happy for that. US wars. So we're here in Rockhampton on Durable Country talking about US wars, talking about Assange. 
um, and we're so just for this to looking at the history of U.S. bases. The governments of Australia and the U.S.A. had to sign an agreement about what laws would prevail over U.S. troops in Australian under Australian law. They signed a thing called the Forces, the Status of Forces Agreement and made it secret. So this is what Gillard and the government did, lined up with the US and then refused to tell the Australian people what they signed up for. Well, what they signed up for has been revealed, thanks to leaks, the US troops in Australia can do what they like. They can use any air airfield. They can use any port. They can transport soldiers to any place and have no obligation to inform what's going on. In fact, when you read it, you'll realise that it is a takeover. The US Army can do anything. They are immune from laws. For example, this is as a rape. US bases are notorious for producing soldiers who are a bit crazy and Rapists. What happens when there's a rape by a US soldier in Australian soil? I tell you what happens, they snatch that guy up and slide him back to the US out of reach of the Australian law. They don't have to, you know, rapists don't feel, don't, are not obliged to face the music in Australia. They can slip away. That's the deal that they've done. So understand, my friends, we are occupied. This is no friendly ally. This is an occupation force that has moved into our country and taken over our army and its application. So we pay for all this wonderful weaponry. Remember the F-35? Is it still in memory? These were the most expensive aeroplanes, jet fighters, that Australia had ever bought, over a million dollars each. And I think we bought 50 or something. Anyway, they were lemons. They never did get all the things they promised back into to place. But here's an understanding you should have about these planes. Before they can use their weapon systems, be that cannon or bombs or whatever, it's not an Australian command that allows the pilot to do this. It is a US command, and more particularly, it's a Lockheed Martin command. Before they can work those planes, they've got to have the approval, not only of the US government, but Lockheed Martin, the builders, okay? They're not our aircraft, it's our taxes that have been consumed here, we don't get what we ask for. We are told to buy these things, we just fall into line. This government is so corrupt, and I'm talking about Labor and Liberal. They signed up for the US agreement. How are you doing? Thanks for your applause. I'm glad you're in touch with the truth here. What am I? I'm rabbiting on. I want to say my discontent. It's symbolised by the US war games, US-led war games at Talisman Sabre and elsewhere. So 30,000 troops are involved in these war games. 30, 11 troops. different national armies 11 are lining up to train under the US about how to invade how to coordinate their forces and do what the US wants them to do. With the US. It's here in Rockhampton. Think about a sign it. of the US alliance A war Australia. with China, our largest trading partner, the foundation of our current prosperity. We're not working. Have you noticed how few jobs there are around? How little <coughs> manufacturing there is these days? All that's been stripped away by the US alliance. We are totally dependent vassal states. And so are all the others lined up. US, Canada, or, you know, the US, Canada, the UK, New Zealand, Fiji, Thailand.
Thailand, Turkey, uh, and even Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia is there. All these nations coordinating their militaries Germany. to work with the USA. Who would want this? What sort of independent nation would want this? Well, certainly not the governments we have at present. After the coup against the Whitlam government, if you're back in the 60s, listening, please like and share. A CIA some comments coup is helpful for us. Uh, sign up to wagepeaceau. To bring down a progressive to government. To Twitter, wagepeaceau. What or happened? Facebook, wagepeaceau. Well, basically, the ALC well, so lost to be its here nerve. With us. And it's signed okay. up for a bipartisan agreement Getting with a broad the history of the Australian the last 20 years of the Australian to US not alliance. contest yeah, defence policy. Out in Rockhampton. Whatever the government decided, the Labor Party would sign up for too. The bipartisan agreement towards on defence. So not only were there no voices in Parliament. But the US Embassy in Canberra took on training sessions. They ran leadership uh, training sessions at the embassy itself and had Australian politicians, Labor and Liberal, sign up for them. So if any leader, you know, ALP politician got elected and showed leadership in the parliament, they were taken to be trained by the US. And how does this play out? No one who values their career as a politician in the Labor or in the, in the bureaucracy, in the government or the bureaucracy or the military for that minute, moment, speaks out about the US alliance. It's death to your career if you dare question the Americans. So where will change come, come from? Only us, folks. Just us. If you're going to create a new story, it's just going to be us. And we're doing all right. Thanks to Julian Assange, we've revealed the lies of the US and the US empire credibility has never been so low. As if the planet now is tired of US wars. Another US war, proxy war in Ukraine, for example. No one that I know actually believes there's any future in this to the Ukraine. It's just a deal that the US has struck to create trouble for Russia and its existence on the planet. Summed up, the US attitude is, attitude, what's it, the slogan? It's strategic policy statement. Spectrum dominance. That's what they believe in. That's what they're working for. That there be no competing uh, nations to their leadership, their hegemony in the Pacific and elsewhere. Comments. Just the US. All full spectrum dominant. And that's every country, but in every aspect of their country. And in particular, their economies. U.S. wars have fought for control of resources for U.S. corporations. That's the brutal fact of it. Forget this stuff about liberty. It's all for commerce, all for making the big buck for the U.S. corporations. Let's speak out against it. Right? Let's say no. Thanks for listening. So we're here in Rockhampton on Durrambul country, you know, it's a highly militarized country. And um, um, I'm just going to I'm just going to talk a little bit and just say we're here at at, at um, Durrambul country and we're doing a speak out here uh, at the court where many of us have faced this court many times before and um, we're just going to wrap up our speak out. Thank you so much for joining us and you got you got here a lovely history of uh, the U.S. alliance and the resistance to the U.S. alliance. We haven't talked a lot about the resistance, actually. You might like to just mention some of the resistance that's occurred here in the past, just, and just, then we're going to wrap up. Yeah, just before we wrap up, I just want to um, acknowledge as well and hold space for the victims of war crimes and for David McBride, who um, we wouldn't know about the war crimes the SA has committed if it wasn't for David McBride, who leaked the documents and is now facing life in jail. So for telling the truth about war crimes, we have yet another hero 
for victims of war being persecuted by the Australian government and is life well is looking at spending a life the rest of their life in jail for leaking the evidence about special air services war crimes in Afghanistan where they literally shot children who had no arms, no guns. They killed children. Someone told the truth about this and now he's going to jail. No one yet has been charged or has been prosecuted for the war crimes in Afghanistan and I'm not holding my breath over it. But the person, the lawyer who leaked the documents from the army is being persecuted, is going to court very soon and has a high possibility of going to jail for life and we need to resist that as well. And speaking of resistance, I just want to acknowledge the people who've come before all over this continent, but especially on Dharamgul country, the Dharamgul people who resisted colonisation for the longest time. This machine that came in and killed indiscriminately to steal resources from First Nations people using the labour of poor white people was resisted by the Dharamgul people first. And then since 2005 we've had people come from all over the continent to resist these very large war exercises. It would not be possible for the US to wage their endless murder, their endless wars, if they did not have these war exercises and war preparations. And people have been coming up here since 2005 resisting. We had Brian Law in 2013 do a plowshare action just across the road here or a kilometre up the road where he used a matic with the help of Graham Dunstan and physically destroyed a weapon of war, a large Tiger helicopter to live out the Bible prophecy of turning weapons into plowshares. And that kind of physical courage to resist war and the death and destruction of creation in our home is the kind of courage we need to cultivate and replicate as we move forward, resisting war, resisting ecocide, resisting death, destruction and murder of our home. So thank you to Brian. Thank you to everyone who's come up and resisted the war games, everyone who's engaged in non-violent resistance and put your body on the line. It's not easy to face these magistrate systems, especially when you're standing up against war crimes, against the murder of children in their homes in Afghanistan and other places in the world, and against the death and destruction of our home. We are in the middle of a climate crisis, and these wars are the cause of it. So if we don't resist it, there is no future for our children. Jump in, jump in now and resist with us. Thanks everyone for coming. I'll see you all as we resist our own death and destruction on the front lines of non-violent resistance against the state. Thank you everyone. Join us at Wage Peace AU. Follow us on Twitter, Insta, Dis Disrupt Wars. Uh, follow our network and uh, like and share as much as you can. Thanks for joining us for this um, great speak out with the history of um, the resistance to the US alliance and the history of the creation of this uh, the, this modern period of US alliance. Thank you so much.